So then we talked a little bit about selector specificity in that last lesson and how that can determine the outcome of style conflicts in your CSS. And we also talked about how these conflicts can cause us a bit of a headache when we're working with lots of different styles and even external libraries, because you end up battling with selectors to make the styles you're currently trying to apply work. And this constant battle can lead to messy CSS full of really long selectors littered with important statements. So there is a way now that we can mitigate this problem a little bit, and that's by using something called cascade layers. And what cascade layers allow us to do is group together styles into different layers, and then specificity rules only apply to selectors within the same layer as each other. Now that might not make much sense right now, but let's take a look at an example so you can see how this works. So right now we know that we have two selectors targeting the same anchor tag. There's this one, which targets anything with the class of BTN, which the anchor tag in question has. And we can see that if we head to the HTML file and look for it, then there's the other selector, which targets all anchor tags within an article inside the main content class. So that rule or that selector is targeting exactly the same anchor tag as the other selector. And since both selectors are trying to style the same properties, we end up with a conflict and the selector which is more specific with the highest weight wins and no styles are applied. In this case, that's the second selector. So we don't end up seeing the link styled as a button as we would like. So then let's try solving this problem by making a new cascade layer. To do that, all we need to do is type at layer and then the name of the layer, which I'm going to call content because the selectors in here are all going to be to style site content like articles, lists, etc. Then we can open some curly braces and place any selectors for this layer inside them. So then let's cut the selector targeting the anchor tags in the article and paste it inside this layer. Then we can save the file so we can preview this again in a browser. And now we can see that the anchor tag inside the article is being styled using that BTN class and not the selector targeting all anchor tags in the article, even though the BTN class selector is still less specific. And that's because we've moved the other selector into its own layer now. And when we do that, any selectors defined outside of layers have precedence over styles defined inside layers and the weight of the selectors doesn't matter. So since the BTN class is defined outside a layer, it takes precedence over the other selector defined inside the layer. And that's why we now see the anchor tag at the bottom of the article styled like a button but the other selector still correctly styles all the other anchor tags inside the article as it should do. So you can think of layers as a way to define a new scope within a style sheet where any selectors defined inside the same layer have the same kind of local scope as each other, right? And any conflict of styles between them follow the same rules as normal where whichever selector has the highest weight wins. But then you can think of selectors defined outside of layers as having more of a global scope and they always take precedence over selectors defined inside layers, even if the selector is much less specific or less weighty. Now, you don't just have to have a single layer like this. You can have multiple different layers in a style sheet. For example, I could make another layer below the current one called UI, and I could place all my styles for UI stuff like buttons or form fields inside this layer. So let's move the current button select into this layer now, save the file, and then see if this has any effect on which selector wins. And we can see now that it has no effect. So we have our two layers right here, the button inside the UI one and the main content article A inside the content one, and it's not affecting it. The button one still takes precedence over the main content article A selector. And the reason it has no effect is because the two selectors are in different layers. So normal conflict rules don't apply between them. Instead, the winner is simply the selector that is in the layer, which is defined lower down in the style sheet. So if I was to cut this UI layer and paste it above the content layer, then save it, we can preview that in the browser. And now we can see that the selector inside the content layer wins because that layer was defined below the UI layer. So the order of the layers does matter when it comes to priority of selectors. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in the next lesson.